Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the second problem of Lead Code Weekly Contest 355. Again, it's a medium level problem. Let's see what it says. So the problem name is largest element in an array after merge operations. So the problem statement says that you are given a zero indexed array nums consisting of positive integers. You can do the following operation on the array any number of times. What is that operation? Choose an integer i such that it lies between 0 to nums of length minus 1 and nums of i is less than nums of i plus 1. Replace the element nums of i plus 1 with nums of i plus nums of i plus 1 and delete the element nums of i from the array, right? I, I understand it. It may be complex. I'll explain it to you separately. Return the value of the largest element that you can possibly obtain in the final array. Okay, so let's take this example. So it is two, three, seven, nine, three, right? It says that these are indices zero, one, two, three, four. So you can choose any index that you want, right? But there is one condition. What is that condition? Whatever index you choose, suppose you choose the ith index, then the value at the ith index should be less than equals to the value at i plus one th index. This is the only condition, right? This is the only condition. Like for example, you can choose zero th index, you can choose first index, second, but not third because here nine is obviously not less than equals to three. Okay. This is the first condition. Now, when you choose, what you do is you basically delete one number and replace the other one. So if you choose I and I plus one, then this guy I plus one actually becomes equals to nums of I plus nums of I plus one. Okay. Nums of I plus nums of I plus one. And this I th element is deleted. Simple. That's what the problem is saying and delete the element nums of i from the array and return the largest element that you can form. So let's dry run this example. It is two, three, seven, nine, three, right? I can choose these two elements. What happens? It's, it becomes two, three. This guy uh, gets deleted and the sum of these two is 16. This is the new array, right? Again, I can choose these two. So it becomes two. This guy gets deleted because i th element gets deleted and this is the i plus one th element. So 19 and three. Again, I can choose these two. This guy gets deleted. It becomes 21 and 3. Now, what is the maximum number in the array that you can obtain at any step, right? So it's 21, right? It's 21. Hence, 21 is your answer. Let's dry run for this one. It's 5, 3, 3, right? Can I choose these two? Yes, because it is less than equals to 3. So this becomes 5 and 6. Then I can choose these two, these two right? Because this gets deleted, it is replaced by six. Then I can choose these two. It gets deleted and I get the answer as 11. So 11 is my answer, right? This is what the problem is asking us to do. Uh, the number of elements I can have is 10 raised to the power five and each element can go up to 10 raised to the power six, right? So let's see how we approach this problem, right? A very, a couple of very simple observations and you yourself will be able to solve this. The first observation is I choose an element I and an element I plus one, right? I can only choose these elements if the element at the ith index is less than or equal to element at the i plus 1th index, right? That means the operation that I am performing, right? I should perform the operation so that I am able to merge maximum number of elements, right? Maximum number of elements. But for merging, what is the condition? The element on the right hand side should be large, right? Should be large because uh, suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, there are 4 elements, right? Right now, everyone is satisfying the condition means, uh, I'll, I'll take one example. Suppose it is one, two, three, four, right? Now, what is one possible way to perform this operation? You start performing the operation from the right hand side. That first you merge these two, it becomes one, two, seven, merge these two, it becomes one, nine, then you merge these two, 10. This is one form of operation. What's the other way? You start from here. So it becomes three, three, four. Then you merge these two, it becomes six, four. Now just see the problem here. Now you cannot merge these two because the element on the left hand side is larger than the element on the right hand side, right? So because of this reason, we will try to perform the operations from the right hand side. Okay. Because our target is to make the elements on the right hand side as large as possible. Right? Now, whenever we have to do this, right? Obviously I'll have to reverse from the right hand side. Now comes the question, how? To exactly this is one of the observation the second thing is how to exactly solve this problem so just see five three three right first thing i know the direction now what i'll do this is a single element i can't do anything now 
what about these two elements if these two elements form a combination right if these two form a combination then yes my array becomes 5 6 the size decreases by 1 now i am concerned about this element and the next element getting it so i can take the help of a stack here i can take the help of a stack here because whatever is the status of my stack the topmost entry right the topmost entry you can you can avoid using stack as well because the elements will be in increasing order and on, and so on i have used a stack here so here what will happen the topmost element whatever is this is basically taking care of the <laughs> sorry is taking care of the uh, what do you call it the 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 sum the maximum element that you have till now right for example uh, in this case it's 533 3. so 6 will be here right in this case it is 23793 3. so this is the first element i push into the stack right now the next element is 9 i know 9 and 3 cannot form a combination because this is i element this is i plus 1 no not satisfying the condition clear the stack now push 9 here then you get 7 now you see 7 and 9 like whatever is the element in your stack that is forming a combination then what you will do just pop it to perform the operation and again push back it becomes 16 the next element is 3 can 3 and 16 form a combination so every time i know the element that i am uh, checking is on the left hand side of the element already in the stack right just check it it becomes 19 you just pop it right it becomes 19 then you check can 2 and 19 form a combination yes you just pop it it becomes 21 and 21 is your answer right so first we see the direction the second thing is we use a stack again you can avoid using a stack you can just take a couple of variables that will also work since this was a contest the first thing that came to my mind was stack and hence i coded it that way right but the code is very small okay you can just try out with it with a couple of variables okay and do let me know how how you code it up right so this is the number of elements I have. This is the stack I have. Now I push the last element into the stack. And my answer is obviously since this is the only element I've considered till now, right? Now i equals to n minus 2, i greater than 0, i minus minus. Now what is the current element? ith element. I have to compare the ith element with the topmost element in the stack or rather the only element in the stack, right? So I take a variable for that so that the number of if else, if and else, else conditions are reduced, right? So popped element equals to 0, right? Now, if, if the stack is not empty, if it is not empty, then just pop the element, right? Just pop the element. Now, there are two conditions. If there are two conditions. Whatever is the element in my stack, that is forming a valid pair or that is not forming a valid pair. In both the cases, I have to pop it. If it is not forming a valid pair, I have to discard it. If it is forming a valid pair, I have to pop it, add it to the current element and just push it, right? So, that's what I'm doing this is the popped element right now popped element equals to now if the popped element is greater than equals to current that means this is the current element this is the popped element right now if this guy is less than equals to the popped element that means the element on the right hand side is large so what happens popped element will be as it is else i'll i make it zero now this zero is because again i'm saying no, I, I just wanted to avoid the if else condition so that is why this zero is basically to tackle the condition where your current element is suppose six and the element that you have in your stack is three right now these two cannot form a valid combination so popped element will have value three but actually i should not add anything right i should just push it in this case i should just just push six however if it was opposite it was three here six here i should push nine so that is why if this is the combination you make it zero if this is the combination don't make it zero so that is why right uh, s dot add current element and the popped element simple now just update your answer answer equals to max of answer math dot max of whatever is your current element and if it's not empty then the topmost element in your stack right again there could be different ways to code the solution but ultimately what i want wanted to say is the intuition is you move from the right hand side I have already told you the reason. The second thing is you can just take a couple of variables as well to solve it because here at every step I'm squeezing the size of the array and I'm just concerned about the latest value that I have just created, right? So yeah, that's what I uh, we can do in this problem. So yeah, I hope you learned something new from this video. Do support it by giving up a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel as well. In case you have any queries related to the solution, mention that in the comment section. I'll revert on each one of them. Also, try to solve it using a couple of variables. Mention like you can just attach the link of your solution in the comment section. By the way, I attach the link to my solutions, accepted solutions in the description of every problem. So you can just go and check the this accepted solution as well, right? So yeah, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.